speed. Sound speed. Like even Mark. right now, we just pray that the story that you've written would be communicated clearly. We pray for your grace over Jordan and Caitlin as they're sharing this. We pray that you would give them every word to say. They'd be faithful to say it, not a word more, not a word less. That you'd get the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. My life before the light of the world entered was filled with just constant seeking and striving for earthly pleasures to kind of give me that next fix. I would seek a fix and a lot of times those fixes were through lust, um, you know, pornography, um, seeking relationships with women outside of my marriage, mostly emotionally, but ultimately about a year ago today, the, those started to become more physical relationships where I was seeking these other women and, and their approval to make myself feel better. Seeking those things of the world and then f once I had done those things, feeling an immense sense of guilt and shame. Having grown up going to church, knowing that the things I'm doing aren't the things I should be doing, but still feeling kind of trapped in this, this cycle of I can't get out. Trying meeting with people from a uh, church we were going to before, tried going to 12-step meetings, all of these things, even got to a point where I was on several prescription medications. I had no idea that any of that was going on until right before Christmas and then leading up through Christmas of last year. At that point, he told me, I don't want to be married anymore. I don't want all of the responsibility of having a wife and kids, but I want to make it through Christmas and then as soon as Christmas is over, we'll just get a divorce. I was devastated. One of the conversations that we had had was, I want the kids to continue going to love and being in love kids, they really like it. And I just think it would be good for consistency, even if we're not together, if the kids are there every Sunday. I would go sit in an encounter. And I remember there was a message that uh, PT shared uh, about Abraham and Isaac the, the, the test revealed the truth. Take your son, your only son, and go to Mount Moriah and sacrifice him. What, what did you just say, God? Take my son and kill my son? That doesn't make any sense at all. What does God do? As, as, he, as you release, as you sacrifice, you're opening up to God's best. And there's some people right now, he's going, just, just sacrifice it. And you're like, no. And then you're wondering why you just keep on going around the same circles, same mountain. Just keep on going. And God's like, I got something better, release it. I had been called to join the 180 men's ministry program that's affiliated with Love Church. And that would involve taking four months off of work to go live in a house with three other guys and really just kind of experience like discipleship for a four month period. And at that point, I was like, I'm gonna lose my job if I go do this program. I won't be able to pay my bills, so I'm gonna lose my house. And I'm already losing my wife and my kids because we're getting divorced. I remember driving in my car and just feeling that message come back to me of just letting it all go because it's all God's to begin with. Working with a doctor that I was seeing throughout the four month period I was in the 180 house, I went from being on two antidepressants and an anxiety medication to I'm no longer on any prescription medications. My my brain has physically been healed through this, this process. And I there's no other way in my mind than through the power of Jesus Christ. God letting me find out about all that stuff and was sort of him really tenderly pursuing not only my heart, but Jordan's heart. God has more than just restored. He's more than just brought them back to where they were. He's made them better. They're new. I've also been gifted an amazing gift of a community of people that I can rely on when I'm, when I'm struggling, when I'm feeling like I'm being attacked, I have men that are also pursuing the Lord that I can reach out to that are willing to give me godly counsel. I feel closer to my kids and I feel like I have a purpose in, in pursuing them and showing them 
what a life in pursuit of the Lord looks like. I was literally at a Christmas Eve service in one of the darkest places I've ever been. A Christmas Eve service at Love Church, living in this life of sin and lies and feeling of hopelessness. And God is right there waiting for you. He just wants you to, to turn and choose Him. I'm just so, so grateful for His mercy that I've been given another chance at everything. Um, and He's just continued to bless me through that when I don't deserve any of it. But it's because of His love that I get another chance.